Hello everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a locus problem which means we're going to try to find the set of complex number z that satisfy this type of equation. Sometimes it's given with absolute values, sometimes it's given with arguments and sometimes it's with both or a mixture of different things. So we have ARG, which stands for the argument of Z minus 1 over Z, and that happens to be pi. So what is that supposed to mean? We'll talk about it. I'll show you two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, method, method I would like to use what I usually use. Z equals, what's the name of this channel? A plus BI. Yes, that's right. So let's replace a z with a plus b i, and what happens to z minus 1 over z? Let's find out, and we're going to plug it in. a plus b i minus 1 over a plus b i. And then, you know, here we're supposed to use the conjugates, a minus b i and a minus b i. That's going to give us a plus b i minus a minus b i divided by a squared plus b squared. Remember, when you multiply two complex conjugates, you always get a real number, which is in the form of sum of two squares. Obviously, there is one underneath here, and we'll make a common denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply a plus bi by a squared plus b squared, and then subtract a minus bi, and write this with a common denominator. All right? And this is not equal to anything yet. We're going to go ahead and simplify this completely and then plug in here. And then we're going to look at the argument thing. Okay? Now, let's simplify this as much as possible. At least write it as a complex number in standard form. Which means, again, something that looks like A plus BI or X plus YI. Same thing, right? Pretty much. Let's go ahead and distribute. So I'm going to distribute uh, in a smart way so distribute the multiply the a by a squared plus b squared and then multiply the b by a squared plus b squared don't forget to add the i and the minus a plus b i and then we're going to put together the real parts and the imaginary parts the real part is going to be a cubed plus a b squared minus a and then the imaginary part is just going to be a squared b plus b cubed plus b times i. And then all over that is going to be a squared plus b squared. And now we can go ahead and write this number as a cubed plus a b squared plus, I mean not plus, minus, I meant, minus a all over a squared plus b squared plus i times a squared b plus b cubed plus b all over a squared plus b squared. Now here's where the argument comes into play we said that, or we were given that argument of this number, not z, argument of the whole thing, is pi. What is that supposed to mean? Well, first of all, if the argument, and let's call this number w, we now know that argument of w is pi, which kind of greatly simplifies things because we use substitution, which is nice, right? So argument of w is pi. What is that supposed to mean? It means that when you write w as x plus yi, if w is x plus yi, then tangent theta is going to be y over x. But theta in this case is pi, so tangent pi is going to give you y over x. By the way, by, by y and x, I mean the following. The real part I called x, and the imaginary part I called y, because I can no longer call them a and b, right? a and b was, were already used. So, what is tangent pi, though? Wait a minute. Tangent is sine over cosine, isn't it? So this is sine pi over cosine pi, but sine pi is 0, and cosine pi is negative 1, so tangent pi is 0, which means y over x is 0. This means y is 0. Obviously, x should not be 0, and it won't be 0, right? So y equals 0, meaning that you don't have an imaginary part. Isn't that cool? Yes. This whole thing is going to be zero. But what is the first part going to be, right? The first part, the real part, can be pretty much anything. But notice that we got zero divided by negative one. So if your argument is 
pi, then you kind of have to think about it this way. This is going to be your argument. And you're going to end up with a negative real number. Yes, the number is complex, but it's also at the same time real, right? So we have to talk about a negative real number. In other words, the real part is going to be the real number we were talking about. In other words, x. So this is x, and x needs to be less than 0. Make sense? Okay, good. So let's go ahead and write those conditions down. x is less than 0, and y is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and write our system of equations. a cubed plus ab squared minus a divided by a squared plus b squared is going to be less than a. And a squared b plus b cubed plus b divided by a squared plus b squared is going to be 0. Again, we have to focus on the numerators because a squared plus b squared is always positive. Obviously, they can't be 0. Even if one of them is 0, if both are 0, then we're in trouble. So the numerator needs to be positive, I mean negative here, right? So a cubed plus ab squared minus a is less than 0. And a squared b plus b cubed plus b must be equal to 0. So we kind of got an interesting system of equations, or should I say equations and inequalities, or whatever. You got an inequality and an equation. How do you solve for A and B? That's going to be tough, right? Yeah, it's going to be kind of tricky. But let's go ahead and leave it at that. I'm going to leave this as an exercise. How do you find A, B values, or at least some condition? And let's go ahead and talk about the second method, which I find, obviously, much, much cooler. Okay, here's how we can work with the second method. We're going to keep it very simple. Argument of z minus 1 over z is pi. Now, we just noticed that if the argument of a complex number is pi, then its real part is negative and its imaginary part must be 0, right? So, think about this number. When we, when we kind of make a common denominator, we're going to get the following. And notice that this is supposed to be a real number. So z is real. If you want, you can replace z with x, if that makes more sense to you. But doesn't matter. In this case, z is a real number because its imaginary part is 0. Make sense? Now, under those conditions, we just need to think about the second condition, which is the real part being negative. So the real part of this number is itself because it's real. So this part must be less than 0. So we kind of got a simple inequality that we're supposed to solve to find the conditions on z. Make sense? Okay. Now, we can solve this inequality by looking at the roots, uh, z equals plus minus 1 or z equals 0. I'm going to put those values on a table. This is going to be my z, and this is going to be z squared minus z over z, or which is, we can call that f of z, I guess. And we're going to have three values negative 1, 0, and 1. These are all zeros or roots. And then the sign is going to change at them. So if z is really large, z squared minus 1 over z is going to be positive for sure, right? And then it's going to be negative, and then it's going to be positive, and then it's going to be negative. Guess what? We want this expression to be less than 0, which means negative. So we need this interval and this interval, which means z must be less than negative 1, or z must be between 0 and 1. And of course, z is a real number. Never, ever forget that. So if you ever use a real number, uh, z, if z is a real number on that interval, on those intervals, then your equation is going to be satisfied, which is argument of z minus 1 over z equals pi. So think of a number like z equals 1 half. 1 half minus 1, one, one over 1 half, which is 2, is going to give you negative 3 halves. And the argument of negative 3 halves is pi, because negative 3 halves, remember, is going to be a negative real number, and its argument is going to be pi. Make sense? Okay, so this approach, hopefully you find it easier to do. But here's another question that I want to raise. Can z minus 1 over z be a real number, right? Well, it is a real number. But, uh, well, we just said that z is a real number, but my question is, I guess, can this be a real number for which z complex values this is going to be a real number? That's something for you to, 
look into. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.